Okay, we have a drum here for the nuts, for the bolts. And we need a 9 16 because there's one sneaky little bugger. Sump is off. Okay, I'll swing this engine around. Right. That's where a piece of Conrod came from. Looks like a forged crank. And a bit of an oil pump here. I suppose the oil pump would run off the cam. Very clean in here, that's a good thing. But yeah, why this one would break, I don't know. But when we look at the, can you see that? Yeah, this is nice metal and this looks like it's corroded away over the years with something. I'm not sure why. Okay, we'll reset, we'll start undoing, I'll, I'll pull number two out first anyway, just to have a look, and we'll see what we've got from there. The interesting thing is it's got big ball races front and rear of the crank, so that's, that's something that's a little unusual, not for the era, but it's um, a little unusual for this day and age. Okay, I, I just put a, a little post on Facebook about this cap being broken, and someone asked about these um, slingers and they actually go down through the oil now I can probably explain that a bit better when you get the sump here now try and bring him down there where you can see him a bit you can see these little troughs here um, as the engine goes around it, the little pipe comes through here and these are full of oil and it comes through here and the oil splashes up or is forced up that hole. Now these get oil from, we have an oil pump here and we have an oil manifold here. And in line with each one of these is an oil squirter. So the oil pump picks up the oil, puts it out through this manifold, squirts it into these little trays and then the crank comes down and dips into it. So. A lot of the old vintage machinery or stationary engines did this sort of thing. But look, just for the moment, I'd like to get the, get the number two out and we'll have a good look at this rod, I think, and just see. Um, see what we've got. Don't feel very tight. Yeah. 
and I think you can see see this shiny edge so it was run with that I'm pretty sure that can drop in there that can drop in there now you'll notice some shims here these bearings are shim adjustable so um, when they're first put together there's a heap of shims in then over time as the bearing wears or the crank wears whichever probably the bearing um, you can knock a shim out and tighten it up a little bit so there's a fair chance we can still run these bearings I'll check them out though I'll have a good look and we can probably run these bearings and pull a shim or two out we'll go through each rod separately and independently and we'll set all the oil gaps again so I'll just put that there this fella down here oh and the shims the shims actually come out over the bearing and that's what stops them from turning so I'll find the I'll try and keep all these together it might just make it a bit easier later on um, when we're putting it all back again so There's the nut there, Lance. Stop looking, I found it. So the bearings don't have to go in any particular position. As in, um, you know, one, two, three, four, it just doesn't matter. And you can see this is a top bearing. Hasn't got an oil hole in. The bottom bearing as a hole for the oil to splash up in and look that's all that lubricates it there's no oil holes in the crank or anything like that so I'll see if I can catch this piston well look at that the rod The rod doesn't go down through the liner. Mind you of a TEF Ferguson, doesn't it? <laughs> so that means I've probably just given myself a little bit of extra work here. We'll wind him back over the top. Right, we'll shift this out of the way. Looks like the bottom one's an oil ring. Very little tension in these old rings. but not least is this a cord ring or a cast ring cast ring C 
So that's probably a trap for young players that I just fell into. Then we'll wind him over again and we may have to undo the gudgeon or something like that. It's getting all new rings so we're not too worried about anything. Seems to be stable now, I could probably get rid of this safety sling. Oh, she got some slop there. And there we go, and there's a nice lead on the bottom of the liner to push it all up through. So that's a bit back the front to what we expect nowadays. It's a cast piston, cast iron. So they have a, to hold the gudgeon in, they have a little screw there. And it's got a hole in the end. It looks like a bit of, bit of fencing wire poked up through the middle there. Oh, it's just interesting, all this stuff, isn't it? So that would just rely that will just rely on splash feed. There you go. That's interesting, isn't it? Now the other thing we need to look at is has it got any marks on it or anything like that? And it's been out before. It's got two little two little center pop marks on it, and the center pop marks. Uh, Yep, to the camshaft, on the camshaft side. So that should polish up nicely. I'm just planning on honing the bore. Um, we'll check the bore for out around, but look, I'm pretty sure we should be able to get away with honing and um, probably a new set of rings. It'll take a little while to bed the new rings in though, these big old cast ones. And you can see how easy it is to turn the crank. Um, you can see there's not much tension there, so. Okay, so there's a, there's a nut with a castellated. And that's nice and tight. Looks like we can work with the pump, that's for sure. That should work no worries at all. And that's where the oil gets in to the manifold through here. And then you can see the manifold there now slopping about. So if I undo this here and undo this, we should be able to take that oil manifold out of the way. Now, we've got pipes everybody where. I might even get the right size spanner. Here we go, stop looking. I got it. So this one pipe here, that comes up, that looks to be the governor housing where the, well that actually is, okay, this one coming backwards, there's a pipe coming here goes to the oil gauge and the other one here comes up to this housing here. So this is the other end of the oil gauge that we took off earlier. There we go. There's a little screw comes in here, one each way, and where the cam shaft runs through here, it looks like there's a little screw holding the cam bearings in. 
This is finger tight. That's loose enough. And I'll grab a shifter and we'll undo that fella. Well, there's a sneaky little oil pipe up in the back there. So we'll see if we can get in through there. Well, it's actually a little 716. I got me 716 shifter here. to get the right spanner. You gotta fight us all the way. And there we go. That's the oil manifold. Oil comes in here, sprays out into those little places, little squirters. Oh, there's the other hole. And then it comes back and goes up here. Yep, I'll tell you where that one goes when I know. There you go. Another bit out. We'll put the wash from the nut back on here. Copper washers, so we can probably just anneal the copper washers and get it back on. Now, when I was trying to look for top dead center 
number one, I felt one of the cam followers was stuck, but it doesn't. I, oh, I can't get right to them all. Oh no, I can get it to move. Yeah, look, doesn't feel too bad. All right, I'll have to take all these other pistons out. I'll do that. I won't film all of that. I'll just get them out out of the way. And um, yeah, once we've got that all undone, we'll start on the front here and look at all the timing and all that just to see what's in there.